what is up guys welcome or welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is day and i'm a security analyst and college student and this video is going to be the second installation of the home lab project today we're going to be installing pfsense and i'm just going to dive right into it so here is my website where you can access the pfsense uh the home lab documentation from and uh, just go to www.cyberworksacademy.com and head over to the blog section. And here in the lab section, it's the only thing you see. So you can easily access it. I will leave a link to it in the description so you can easily access it. Um, so in the last video, I went over the topology and the general expectations for the lab. So here we can see everything we're going to be working on. And PFSense is pretty much the foundation for everything. It's what uh, brings all of the different networks and different devices that we're gonna be using in this lab together. So uh, hence the reason why it's the first thing we will be configuring in the lab. So all of the documentation for the lab is here. I won't be going through this because um, uh, all of the specs you need for the labs, the lab is listed here. I also talked about it in the last video. Um, the major thing you really need is RAM. And you know that's uh, as long as you have a good amount of RAM, you should be able to support this project. And um, I will be using VMware Workstation Pro. You can use VirtualBox, but um, I'm using VMware Workstation because I think it's more reliable. But it's really left to you, uh, whichever one you choose. So, with that said, I'll just dive right into the video. Let me watch this a little bit. So, PFSense will be configured as our firewall to segment our private home lab network, and we'll be only accessible from our Kali machine. So we can download PFSense from here. Um, I'll leave a link to the download as well in, in the description below. So let's just click this link. And uh, we have this version. Um, the architecture is AMD64. Installer is, we're gonna be using the ISO image and I'm pretty much closer to Austin, Texas. And then you click download and you, know, you can download the file. I already have the ISO file downloaded, so I'm just gonna get into installing it right now. So let me switch my screen over to VMware Workstation. All right, so here we are in VMware Workstation. So I'll go to the Home tab, create a new virtual machine, and just proceed with the installation. So next. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to be following the documentation f from the blog um, since that's what I created it for. So I have my PFSense ISO here in this folder where I keep all of my virtual machines. So I'm going to click it and then next. And then we're going to name this machine PFSense. And we're going to leave the 20 gigabytes. We don't need too much. So we want to customize the hardware. So essentially, what we need, uh, first of all, we want to make this two gigabytes of RAM, and then uh, we need six more, I mean, five more adapters. So we already have one right now, and we need five more custom adapters to support the other uh, machines and networks that will be uh, administered by our PFSense machine. So we're going to go ahead and add that. So one, I mean, two, uh, three. Four, five, six. All right, so we're gonna assign custom network, um, custom virtual networks to each of the network adapters. So for VMNet three, it's gonna be sorry for network adapter three, it's gonna be VMNet three. For network adapter six, it's going to VM VMNet six accordingly. Network adapter five, uh, it's gonna be VMNet five accordingly. So you get the idea right now. So network adapter four, it's VMNet four, and network adapter two is VMNet two. All right, sweet. Let's go over that. VMNet three, VMNet six, VMNet five. We're gonna leak this as it is. VMNet four and VMNet two. All right. So that's pretty much all we need to do. Uh, you can go ahead and remove the sound card. You don't really need it. Um, besides that, I think that and you can also remove the USB controller as well. So now we can proceed with the project. So we're just going to click finish and it's going to start VMware. I'm just going to click OK here. It's going to start our uh, PFSense machine and we can proceed with the installation. 
So let me quickly refer back to this. So this is just gonna, the purpose of having both the blog and the video series is for them to work hand in hand. So let's say you're following the blog and you're not able to understand something, you can easily refer to the video for a more comprehensive guide. Um, and if you're watching the video and maybe something doesn't work out, you can easily refer to the blog uh, if that works out for you. But um, I'm also happy to help you with your troubleshooting um, if you need help with it, just by joining our Discord server and um, you can ask any question you need about the home lab and I will be happy to help you with any issues you might be facing with it. So it uh, looks like our PS Sense is ready. So we're gonna just accept all the default settings here. Just enter, enter, and um, yeah, this is the first part of the installation. Uh, so this is this should just take a couple of seconds and we can move on to the next part of the installation. All right, it looks like our installation is ready. So we're gonna click no as well here and then reboot and our PF says machine should reboot now. All right, it looks like our PF Sense machine is ready. Uh, so essentially what we will be doing now is as we have assigned for uh, specific virtual network interfaces to those um, extra five interfaces we added, we want to also do the same configuration here uh, so that we can easily um, um, adjust them and um, assign different options and settings to it when we eventually get the PF Sense web configurator. So. Uh, we have two right now, so you should have a WAN address, which will get uh, an IP address through DHCP uh, with the slash 24 and as well as a LAN address. So we're going to add the other interfaces here on our PFSense um, interface. So uh, the first one, so we're, so we're going to be using the option one, which is, which is assign interfaces. So select number one. Uh, let me ensure that I have my number locks off. Number one. And should we set up fill-ins now? No. So we're just gonna assign it accordingly. EM zero, oops, EM zero, EM one, EM two, EM three, EM four, EM five. All right. So we have successfully assigned those names to the six interfaces we have. Um, and so, do we want to proceed? Yes, we do. So this will take a couple of seconds. I think this is just the first time we're doing this. So I guess it will take quite a little bit of time to kind of load up and everything. But after this, um, PF Sense should be faster in terms of responding to uh, new configuration changes. All right, so it looks like our settings are in. Now, as you can see, all of these interfaces have blank IP addresses and we certainly need uh, to assign IP addresses for the networks that um, the other virtual machines that are gonna be in the lab are going to be assigned to. So. We will, so we're gonna just go ahead and assign the IP in the IP addresses to each of the interfaces. So that's gonna be option two right here. Set interfaces IP address. So option two, enter. So we're gonna start with the LAN the LAN interface. Although we already have an IP address, we also want to add some more settings to it because that's um, the IP address is gonna be used to access the PF Sense web configurator. So. 192.168.1.1 is the address and it's going to be a slash 24 and enter enter and do we want to enable GHCP on the LAN? Yes, we do. And the address range is going to be 192.168.1.11 to 192.168.1.2. And do we want to revert to HTTP? No. All right, so this is gonna be the IP address. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, we can, we're can we gonna be able to access the web configurator by using this URL um, when we eventually create our Kali machine. So now let's also um, assign interfaces for the rest of the machines. So, I mean, the rest of the interfaces. So two, uh, so we're gonna do number three. So the IP address is gonna be 192.168.2.1. And it's gonna be a slash 24. Enter, enter. Enable GHCP, no, no. All right. So, okay, so we can do 
option two. So number two, and we're gonna be doing uh, number four, which is option two, the option two interface. So one I two dot one six eight dot three dot one and slash twenty four and enter enter. It's gonna be no no. All right, cool. So we're going. So okay. So we have that. Um, we have that assigned. So we're gonna be leaving option three um, without an IP address because it's gonna have the span port with traffic that uh, Security Onion is gonna be monitoring from our victim network. So we're just gonna leave option three and once. Again, so we we'll do option four, uh, which is EM five. So uh, we're gonna choose set interfaces IP address, which is number two, and then number six, which is option four EM five. And then the IP address for that is going to be 192.168.4.1. Enter. And it's going to be a slash 24 again. Enter. Enter. No. No. All right. And that's it. Like, we have everything we need for our PFSense configuration. Um, we have all the IP addresses we need. And yeah, this is pretty much it for this is. Pretty much all we're gonna do for pfSense here um, on this com uh, command line interface. The rest of our configuration is gonna be done with the web configurator when we install our Kelly interface. But the next thing we're gonna be doing is uh, just like we can see here, we're gonna be configuring Security Onion. So Security Onion will be our all-in-one IDS security monitoring and log management solution. And yeah, that's what I'll be doing in the next video. So like I said, I'm gonna be as consistent as possible with these videos so that we can get this up and running as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button if you like the video, of course. Um, and be sure to share it to anyone who you think it will provide value to. And yeah, once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next video.